soup. History does not remember blood. It remembers names. When was the last time you guys stubbed your toe? Actually, yesterday. Really bad. I thought really? I broke my foot. I had my first, uh, because of Amelia, stubbed my toe today. Yeah, I did yesterday. Her toys were in the way in our bedroom, and I caught the bedpost. Did one of you bring in the smell of tomato soup? Is that one of you? I don't think so. Tomato soup? Yeah. Because that's a smell that wasn't here before you two got here. You sure? I don't know. Maybe my sense of smell is just... Cooked asparagus in the shirt last night. Maybe it was asparagus came in? That might be it. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron the Nerd Soup Monkey and Teddy, and we are back to talk about House of the Dragon, Episode 10, The Black Queen, the season finale that had everybody internet on the internets talking, and some people were horrified. Others maybe were delighted, depending on what side they support, but yeah, I'm excited to talk about this finale. Uh, you guys can listen to this, of course, on YouTube and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, all the homes for podcasts wherever you listen and follow us on social media at nerd soup at bow soup at nerd soup monkey at teddy nerd soup and at anthony jq nash just gonna shout him out because it appears on screen so aaron you're right <laughs> feeling good now i'm checking my shoes okay well before we get into today's podcast and break down themes of royal bloodlines royal successions and battles between heirs we were lucky enough to be sponsored by one of the most unique games out there on the market right now bloodlines heroes of lethas if you're new to bloodline now is the best time to start download and try out the game for free by using our link in the description box below and you will receive an amazing starter pack to begin your journey plus their newly added hybrid system gives players the ability to create their own unique legendary champions by combining the bloodlines of elves demons demigods orcs dwarves lichens and dragonborn you can create the most powerful champions the world of Lethas has ever seen. You can create over 800 different new hybrids between any two bloodlines, and like a true royal, you must raise your children to become champions. What's cool is that your heirs will inherit the talents and traits of their bloodlines, and also their unique appearances, passed down from each family tree and merged into one. The higher your companion's intimacy level is, the more powerful your offspring will be. So not only must you build your kingdom and economy, but you have to play Love Doctor, Matchmaker. Pick the best two characters in order to solidify your power for generations to come. Not to mention the game itself has visually stunning 3D realistic graphics matched with beautiful scenes and fascinating storylines that will leave you addicted to its fun and unique gameplay. New characters are being added to Bloodline every month, so you can get really weird and creative with some of these combinations. And this Halloween, a brand new lineage has been born, a new vampire clan called the Accursed. These are some of the baddest, most terrifying assassins yet to be found in the world of Lethus, an undead clan that rose along alongside the Dark Elves from the ashes of their homeland's cataclysm. I mean, that's a pretty badass and terrifying origin story if you ask me, so you can imagine how dangerous they are on the battlefield. And by partaking in the Halloween event, starting October 27th, you will be able to obtain an accursed champion for free on the seventh day. So head on over to our description box below and download the game today for free. And if you use our link, you will receive a starter pack with $20 worth of goodies, including 10 energy potions, 100k gold, and 100 diamonds. So don't wait. Click that link and become a legend today in Bloodlines, Heroes of Lethus. Well, everybody already got our thoughts, so Teddy, might as well start with you. What did you think about this? Getting the perspective of the side that you were supporting, mm -hmm. I know you must have been feeling like Damon in this episode. Yeah, I was I was chomping at the bit. I was very surprised that she didn't take the, uh, all right, let's go to war, or burn Otto at the stake when he came to town. Burn him at the stake. But it, it, showed, it showed where her head's at, and it was really nice seeing leader Rhaenyra in this episode. For oh, the it's, part. The, it's the coffee. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> How are you picking up that coffee? You smelled that? I can't smell it. Yeah. It's a pretty it, good smell, it's too. It's strong. Black? It's just yeah. black? I want a big black kick right now, too. I did spill. Uh, you know when the, the, the top doesn't always seal? Mm -hmm. I have one of those situations right now. So oh. there is... But, man. An aroma. Good nose, but also bad nose. Yeah, you smelled good it. Good nose to pick up the coffee. Bad nose to think it's tomato soup. <laughs> Maybe bad coffee. Whew. 7 that, 11 they got the conundrum. They got premium stuff over there. That shit's always burnt, dude. I know, it sucks. <laughs> you know what else is burnt? No, oh, no. No not, one's burnt. Not Otto. Yeah. yeah. I wish it was Otto. <laughs> Yo, I took balls to show up after what he did. That one guy got burnt that was a substitute for Lanor. 
R.I.P. Yeah, no, he. <laughs> this is the second time he just showed up and delivered a badass speech. Like, yo, Aegon's got the Conqueror's crown. He's got the Conqueror's knife, Conqueror's sword. What do you want to do? He's only the. He's. he's it's the king. You know? He's that's, the that's king. What, that's what I you mean, need. It, it, I love the king. Anything else? <laughs> Yeah, we talked about that yesterday, right? <laughs> that speech he gives. It's so fucking awesome. Yeah. He just has a good voice. He does. He, yeah. Very soft. The cunt covers crowd. Very soft. Covers very sword. soft, but very, very loud at the same time. He's um one of my favorite characters from this season so far. It, it really is when you compare it to, not even compare it to anything else, but like as far as like a deep cast of characters that you can attach yourself to or just enjoy on screen, they run like 10 deep here. and I th- At least. And obviously we got... Half of those characters, give or take, last week, and the other half receiving the news this week. And, yeah, I think there was, um, seeing, like, the reaction over the past couple days, I think a lot of people have taken away from just the contrast between Damon and Rhaenyra um, in this situation, in, in these moments, after hearing about Viserys' death. Like you said, Damon, more, you know, let's just go to war. Let's fuck it. Let's go scorched earth here. And Rhaenyra having... Uh, more of a rational line of thinking where she doesn't want to put the realm to the torch a la, well, like Daenerys, but um, kind of showing a level-headedness, a coolness, and that's something that Rainey's points out as a reason why, um, well, part of the reason why they want to support her later on. But yeah, it was nice to see her kind of shift into that role of Queen Rhaenyra because, like you said, like we said before, it's like something you can prepare yourself for mentally, but you don't know until it happens. And I think this was a bit of a, a test for her in the eyes of many of the lords, even on her side. And I think she showed great composure. I loved Rainey this episode. She was just chilling the whole episode, watching everyone. That smile of hers. Move. She's yeah. got the million dollar smile. I, I'm surprised people weren't like... Well, she's, well, Rhaenyra's lucky that she didn't want to go to war quick because then she would have told Sea Snake to back off. Let's do what you want to do. Let's go retire. As cool as Rainey's right. is, it doesn't feel like she hates Rhaenyra whatsoever. Both no. of them. She respe- it's like, like we said yeah, last... She maybe well, killed our son, but she's cool. We said last episode that she respects her. She does. And, and that's right. where it's coming from. Well, I think for Rainey's, I'm surprised, like, I haven't... Because when I first watched it, I thought people were going to have this take that, like, Rainey's and Corliss were up to something because of the lingering shots on her face and the looks they were giving. But one of the funniest moments we didn't, we didn't mention on the review was, um... When Corliss comes in and asks where Damon is, and she's like, "Oh, he's doing some secret mission, some Damon stuff," <laughs> and he looks at her like, ah, "Smart move, <laughs> get him the fuck out." Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I see what you did there. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but this episode seemed a lot. Well, I don't know if it was just what happened in the episode, but it seemed a lot less paced than the last episode. I mean, granted, Viserys died, so a lot of stuff had to happen. There's a lot of stuff happening in this episode, so too. So slower, basically. And it felt a lot slower than yeah. last episode. No, definitely. And, and I think them trying to find Aegon makes it feel like things are happening moving more, pressure. more quickly. Yeah. With this, it's they have to sort of react. And there is a bit of a mad scramble here. But yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, the anxiety in episode nine wasn't as strong in this episode. Right. Maybe for Damon's character, because Damon seems to be the one who's itching lost for it. revenge for revenge for revenge <laughs> yeah yeah he lost it a little bit and like we mentioned you know both of these characters lost a child he lost a brother she lost a father and then at the end he loses a stepson she loses her own son yeah. uh, so a lot happens to them within the span of you know four like, hours yeah legit like 24 hours their that, entire lives change that's something you pointed out that I, I didn't really consider uh especially with damon this whole episode because, and I think it's because we see Rhaenyra and what she's going through, that I associated the, uh, losing a child to just her yeah. and not Damon. Because it was just so brutal seeing her go through that and the pain she was in and the way she was holding the stillborn. Like it just. Oh my god, that scene! I just connected it so much more to Rhaenyra, and I didn't even like, even though I know it's Damon's child, I didn't even put that. You on know him. why though? It's because of the time skips, and it's not that big of a problem. Right. But I really think that hurts those moments because it doesn't, she's just pregnant and it's like, okay, yeah, right. They got married and they have two other kids and the third one's on the way. So you almost sort of forget. I didn't put that together just in, like I, I knew it, but <laughs> I didn't think of that until just now when you said that, like Damon lost a kid too. Yeah. And I, I definitely, I have minor issues with Damon in this episode, but I, so do I. don't hate 
the idea of him being too afraid to confront that reality of not only losing another child, but possibly losing Rhaenyra because we've seen it in the show twice. So it was a tough episode for him emotionally, mentally, and that's definitely why he, we find him in that state. He's just acting on instinct. The only thing he can think of right now is violence. That's the only way to get back at these people who have stolen Rhaenyra's throne and now stolen a child, essentially. So he's a bit unhinged in this episode, and we've seen that from him before. Well, yeah, we see at the end, obviously, Rhaenyra... Just that look, man. I'm so excited for in the next season, and it sucks that it's two years away. But it seems like, I know we talked about we wanted to see a little bit more f- fire from Rhaenyra to get revenge. And it, it looks like she and Damon might be on the same page going into <laughs> next season. That's scary that Damon has, a, that has someone that's thinking the same as him. <laughs> it reminded me of Frank, just like the saying, because like, obviously now that um, a lot of people consider Aemon killing Lucerys as the start of the war. So, like, they drew yeah. first blood. I'm just thinking of Frank just saying that. <laughs> oh, that scene too, man. Eamon fucked up. He done fucked up. <laughs> Dude, the re-watching that scene over and over again, it's so horrifying. That is some movie monster magic there, where he comes out of nowhere and chomps this guy out of existence. It's he obliterated too, Lucerus. He, he got... He got up in the clouds. I'm like, oh, good move. Get, 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 get out of the storm. I, I was wondering if people who didn't know what was happening thinking once he gets out of the clouds, above the clouds, he's scot-free. Yeah, I, I thought that. I was like, oh, good move. He's gonna Can get you out of here. imagine those last moments of looking over your shoulder? and all, Oh, my God. You see that? Well, no, actually. Every time you look behind you, you saw the giant fucking dragon. Dude, I felt like such an idiot. I, I texted you this. When when he uh, storms in, right? That's what oh, it's yeah. called. When he arrives on storms in and the bit and uh, Vagar's there. I'm like, what? Who, Baratheons have this? What the hell is that? Oh. <laughs> I didn't, re- I didn't realize yeah. who it was. I'm minute. like, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> no, I mean, and he keeps walking in, and I see Aemon. I'm like, oh, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> it's like makes me feel a little better though, because I, I, having read the books, knowing that Lucerys is actually alive in Vagar's stomach. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait, no, that's that's Pinocchio, right? Yes. Ah, oh, fuck. I keep confusing them this week. Well, Pinocchio. That's a whole discussion. Is he alive? Is he not alive? Well, by that time, he is a boy. Well, Geppetto right? is in the well. Maybe. Is that Nemo too when the whale swallows him in their life still? Yeah, that's what I thought of. <laughs> well, it's also it's got some Bible it. guy too. Oh, right? no, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, me- um, um, Jonah? Men in Black. When the cockroach eats Rob- uh, Robin Williams. Oof. When the cockroach eats uh, Tommy Lee Jones and he's still alive in his stomach. That was a great move. Yeah. Great movie. Uh-huh. Both three of them. So I think Lucerus uh, is setting up shot- shop inside Vagar. <laughs> plotting his revenge. Plots way well, I guess I just sit here. <laughs> me and my thoughts. Poor kid. He was great this episode. Yeah, he Even was. though we're losing some development because of the time jumps, and I wish we could have spent more time with the Valerian children, and his, Allison's children as well, his performance as a scared boy who's mm-hmm. putting on a brave face was excellent for this scene. Do you think I if, mean, for this episode. Do sorry. you think if it was a traditional season and we had that actor the whole time, that that moment would have resonated some, like, Ned Stark, Rob Stark type Maybe. emotion? yeah. It did kind of feel like it was just a sacrifice for the better of the show, you know? Right. Yeah, this is a good way for us to One end of those the wild season. moments, like the last yes. episode. Yeah. Right. But and a lot of people were, uh, by the time we got to, like, episode six, episode seven, people who had read the book were thinking, this is how this season is going to end. This is going to be the cliffhanger going into season two, because it was such a monumental moment. It is the start of the dance, essentially. But they, they still did it right. I mean, even though, like, you have to have that. That has to be, that has to be a start of the war, you know? That's the reason why she wants to no, go to war. I think it still works, but I'm just imagining that. She impacts. was ready to give up. Well, not give up, but she was ready to bend the knee. And now. I don't know if she was weighing her options. Well, once Corliss was like, we got the Stepstones. Yeah, true. You got my Navy. She was like, we're cooking with Grease here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting hot. We're getting hot. We don't even need dragons. We just, yeah. need, we just get the Starks. Yeah, and hot the old, old school way, man. Uh, I, <laughs> did you, someone posted the Robert Baratheon, old Mark Addy narration of the events of Storm's That was End. awesome. It's so fucking good. Yeah, there's a supplemental where... Return home to your pup, or whatever. Return to your Return bitch. home, pup, yeah. What, mom? <laughs> <laughs> there's a narration that on one of the DVDs where they're talking about the start of the dance, and it's Robert Baratheon narrating it. So it's pretty cool. Was and they put it? his narration over that scene, and they spliced in all the scenes, all the sequences. Oh, so it was really well like done. The and War of Ravens was over, Final and that War of Dragons has begun. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Saying, like, I, you know, I'm saying it's cool. Fuck. that. How do you think of that? Yeah. Right. 
You're screaming at me. Do you think if they went back, they would, and they knew that no free ads. They knew uh, House of the Dragon was going to be a thing. They would have like left out some of those histories and lore, or some of the moments in the series where Maybe. they spoil it. Thinking so far ahead, I know only a genius could have done that. Wait a minute, what if this pops off? We don't want Joffrey spoiling it for everybody. So for you <laughs> two, little bitch, it actually is perfect that Joffrey is the one who spoiled it. For and you Shireen, two, but what, Stannis got her back. When, when he goes to when Jace goes to. Uh, Winterfell. Is there a lot more that's going to happen with that? Was there a reason why they couldn't show it in this episode, him getting to Winterfell? I and definitely think they want to save that for season two. Yeah. Because Ryan Condal mentioned that season two is going to feel more like season three and four of Game of Thrones, where you're going to have multiple perspectives. You're going to be shifting that throughout the episode, different locations. So I think Jace is going to become, he's going to feel like more like a main North. character. Yeah. Okay. Well, and also I think just timing wise, you want to save that, right? I want to see it. That's good for promotional material. It, when that first trailer drops and we see Winterfell, see Winterfell? yeah, and whoever they get much Craigan. closer, he's still in the air. Right, he's probably he's not going to get the air. news until he's in the veil. Yeah, is that well? Is that why she sent uh, Luke yeah. to Storm's End? Quick yeah, ride. the idea is that it's faster, but in and out. What they don't <laughs> no factor in is that <laughs> it is closer to King's Landing, so maybe there's an envoy already there, and there was the biggest envoy in the Seven there's Kingdoms the waiting for him. <laughs> So it's, uh, I think that's clever writing, uh, where you think you're making the right choice. You're trying to fight against fate, right? But yeah. Lucerus was just set up to fail as soon as he landed. And everyone's joking that he should have just turned right around. But I mean, he's should've. trying to be brave. He's trying to prove himself as a he prince is, of uh, you the gotta, Seven you, Kingdoms. you got to know there's no chance. He's very you want to run into him? Of well, all people, you want to run into Eamon? Come there on. was definitely an idea in his mind, and people have been arguing over this, that Eamon didn't mean to kill him. So I thought I he, he probably felt he was protected even though he was scared. You see the respect that the Baratheon Lord shows him. Yeah. Even though he denies his terms, he still protects him and he escorts him to his dragon. But uh, I guess Aemon just ran out the back door. <laughs> How does he climb up Vagar so I left quickly? Your, uh, I left my phone back on Vagar. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I have to go get, I have to get my wallet. <laughs> going to split that Uber Eats. Bro, the second, the second uh, Lucerus walks in, he tosses a knife. He wants his restitution. Bro, the way he stands is just so gangster. Badass, man. Yeah, he's such a badass. He's a force. But he's you also... Can feel it. You can, when he's on screen, you can feel how like how intimidating he is. I love timing for movies. He's got icy eyes when he's look. Well, icy eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And now he's got the sapphire. It's pretty icy, though. But that look can burn a hole through a wall. You just know. He, he's like a predator. That's why it's the perfect <laughs> dragon for him. I love unrealistic timing or um, like yeah, unrealistic timing in movies and TVs, but it like makes the moment so much more cinematic. Like when he turns around, just like when Lucerus walks in, it's like, well, I'm just, why would he turn around? Like just to make that dramatic <laughs> turn when he comes in. It is I. Or even when Damon just have Caraxes come at the perfect time. Oh, I was thinking about that. Do they have ESP? <laughs> he just knows when to turn that corner. Hey, it's Caraxes. Long neck, big daddy. It takes a lot of practice. <laughs> he comes in too early. <laughs> no, no, get back, get back. I think we could have used more Damon, though, in, like, the war room. I mean, this I mean, is, like, the most he's been involved. There. I mean, he's been involved in, like, cool moments, but, like, dialogue-wise in a while. Right. Yeah. Did he, is... though? Besides the scene with just him and Rhaenyra? He... Well, he's also got the scenes during the, some of the councils where he is challenging Rhaenyra. Yeah. And also the first scene with the council when he's telling them to send out the ravens get in touch with their allies oh, so yeah, yeah he is a bit more active in this episode and like i said some of it makes sense for me other, other times it, it really doesn't uh i said this on the first review i wish that rhaenyra and damon were more on the same page because i think the drama and the tension between them doesn't really add much to the story for me it's a, it's one of those where you can kind of tell that he it feels like he wants the throne more than rhaenyra does so it's like they took the throne from you like you want it back don't you like let's go to war let's go get the throne back how anxious he is to get the throne well, when rhaenyra is like we'll play it We'll play it by year. We'll see what's going on here. I think they did it so extreme on both sides. Just like a to, hot and cold. Well, just to sh show the contrast between them here. Yeah. Um, I don't really mind it because, like we said, Damon's always been impulsive. And you tell he that this would ignite that fire within him that he is kind of just... Yeah, I think he's rational in some of the movements he's making trying to get the Ravens out. So, like, he's still level-headed, like level -headed, but, like, in the back of his mind, it's war. Like... But everyone oh, defended warmer, him. Man. Two Not, weeks. We got this. In episode seven, when his children show up bloodied, and he's just in the background, fine. Calm as a fucking whistle. <laughs> oh, when, when the, they had that fight, right? Not his children. No, his his daughters. 
Go. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I thought you were about <laughs> And everyone's Chase, like, yeah. well, Damon loves them. He's concerned, but he wants everybody else to put their cards on the table He's before Rainies, making man. his room. He, he was Rainey's in this episode. Well, Rainey's was no, Damon in this well, episode. He, yes. You know, he's always in the back lurking, yes. thinking. And that was Rainey's this episode. <laughs> right. So I think it threw me off a bit. And some people push back on why does Damon, why is Damon questioning what happened to his brother? Didn't he see him? And even though in an episode eight, he sniffs True. the tea and he does question Allison, what the hell have you guys been giving him? But I do think in that moment, it was a dumb thing to ask. How did he die? Well, Damon, he died. I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's missing half his face. <laughs> he, take, he took off the mask. <laughs> I guess Damon wasn't paying attention. He to also scene. never. He, he he didn't like the arrangement that was happening on King's Landing. He when when he first got there, and he like you said, he sniffed it. He felt like there was a little more booze than tea. So like they tried putting him out. Right, and uh, I and then there's still a fact though. Your son takes the throne. Really, you, you see, in his head, he killed him for the throne. Right. Well, I also think Damon just hates Otto Hightower. When he yeah. was walking through that thing, and he was just pacing back and forth. Oh, so yeah, ready to he draw was swords. so ready. <laughs> he did draw a sword. <laughs> I know. Sword. Yeah, that's something people were arguing about. Should Rhaenyra have killed Otto there? The old adage is, don't shoot the messenger. But I guess with a sword, you can circumvent that in a way. Slice the messenger. I mean, if I'm Rhaenyra, I'm Rhaenyra, I'm cooking him. Kick the messenger, we know. And Aemon ate the messenger. So... So everyone got a pass except for her. <laughs> Maybe you could keep him as a prisoner. But no one wants to start it. No, yeah, nobody whole, wants to start it. We got our answer. Yeah. That was Rainey. Uh, Rainey says, you know, yeah. she doesn't want, it's not her war to start. That's going to be something that, like, uh, freezing cold takes. What? Like, when the war's starting <laughs> and, like, people are like, oh, oh, this war's not going, like, a lot of shit's going on. Rainey's being like, well, you know, I didn't want to start it, so <laughs> my hands are clean here. I like how in that war room they kind of showed some realism with Damon, too. When he's like, we have 14 dragons. Can we just go there and kill them all? <laughs> yeah, the, the very realism of uh, invoking dragon not re- fire. <laughs> not, not, not realism, but like what we're thinking. Like you have dragons. Why, like just go there with your dragons and take them out. But he, he comes right. out and says it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you no, know. I'm joking. I think that's a, a good point because we often wonder with certain situations, well, why not just use the dragon or why not use yeah. this magical power? But sometimes you just have to suspend your disbelief for certain things. But at least it was addressed. And that's where they changed Rhaenyra's character a little bit, where they are presenting her as the level-headed, reasonable queen. She doesn't want to just plunge the realm into absolute chaos because she knows the destruction that will ensue. But when you do read the book, and you don't need to be totally faithful to the book, but there is a bit more edge to her, where she will strike first if she thinks it's necessary. So... That contrast between Damon and Rhaenyra, it didn't. I don't think it's a major flaw of the episode, but I, I found it to be a, an interesting choice that I didn't necessarily love. Well, it seems like they're deliberately, and I, I truly think they're saving it. They were saving it for Lucerys dying and her having that moment transitioning into that type of character. Because even when, but she's they, technically not well, shooting first, though. Either when she she's kills Vaymond, I believe in the books, like it's Rhaenyra's, like she's like fucking kill Vaymond. Where? Right, he's making accusations, and she says, you know what, Damon, bring me his head. Yeah, so... She's um, got a little venom there, and that's not to say that she's this unreasonable, crazy person, but... But there's a certain moment that's going to happen next season that you know of, um, that, like... It doesn't add up. It's hard for her... To go that far? <laughs> to not be who we think she's going to be next season. If she's still the same character, like if she doesn't change, and that they're going to have to do some maneuvering there, I feel like. No, they definitely will change her. And I guess that look at the end yeah. is what lets us know that she's headed down a darker path. <laughs> but uh, even the moment, it's a moment I criticized in the first review when Damon does choke her. I always find it to be a lazy trope in Hollywood, just the random domestic violence against a woman. I think you could have got that point across by him smashing a table or screaming. Yeah, I was a little thrown off when he did that too. Yeah, like, what, the hell, I, what the hell's going on? I I compare it to when Robert Baratheon strikes Cersei in season one. He's immediately regretful. Then it opens up an avenue for Ned to ask Cersei, "Has he done this before?" And then he learns about the abuse that Cersei's been taking all of these years. Does all so honor it's you of, again? <laughs> and it sort of it sort of shatters this image that he has of Robert. Even though I think we would all agree that Robert is on the moral scale better than Damon, but it opens up some some insight into his character and some of the flaws that he has. And I think, like I said, he's immediately regretful for doing it. He tells Ned, I shouldn't have done that. So it opens up and it develops these characters in an interesting way, 
with this, it's just Damon's an asshole. And right. that, I'm not going to get too hung up on it, but the way they, the, some of the writers talk about Damon is starting to piss me off. Just, it feels like they're talking down to the audience. Like they keep just wringing our necks. You're not supposed to like him. Oh. You're not supposed to. Oh. And I don't even like him that much. My favorite character is Viserys, and Viserys is a pussy. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> so I don't love Damon, but I, I just didn't love that moment. To me, it just. And people well, you think, been, do you think they're trying to make us not like him for a reason? I don't think they. Is there a reason why they're, why they're trying to do that? I don't think they it? dislike Damon. I think they're talking more about like the romantic romanticization of Damon where like everyone thinks he's like this misunderstood uh like you know calling him daddy oh, and so, stuff so. like I think it's like that but I think as a character they're they're a fan of him and it's George's favorite character he's written so like obviously they know I, I think they don't they're not surprised that people like Damon I think they're surprised the reasons why well, they like him well, is it like or uh, how they picture him just so, some of the fans and I, I think a lot of that is just having fun online too I don't think it's something you should take super seriously I don't think people who are like oh I love like Damon I want him to like marry like want to marry him and stuff even though he's killed his ex-wife and choke yeah. out his current wife I don't care about that I think that's all done and just like fun as a joke it's like so it's like well the writers are saying this episode when he kills his ex-wife on purpose then people start not liking him and then they start, they like him more but I think <laughs> it makes him a more interesting character that he's willing to go these lengths except when it comes to Rhaenyra and Viserys that to me makes him more interesting yeah. he's a psychopath but he's got a soft spot for Rhaenyra why? that adds an interesting layer but I don't want to say that the moment of him choking her shatters that idea because he's still a great character and they do share a, I guess a loving moment at the end when he seems to be wiping away some tears and he gives her the news about Lacerys' death takes her away from the table so he's trying to break that news in the best way possible but like I said about the way that writers sometimes use domestic violence to shock the audience it's a bit cheap for me it's almost like the dramatic equivalent of a jump scare we always complain in horror movies that jump scares are lazy to me this felt lazy and like i said with season one in game of thrones with between robert cersei and ned that moment adds a new wrinkle to their dynamic you know i'm not, even though it is disturbing i'm not against a moment like this if it serves the story and the characters and for me it doesn't add anything to the dynamic between Rhaenyra and Damon. For me, it, it, moving forward, I do hope that they're more sort of on the same page and this was just a bad day for Damon. Just chalk it up as a bad day. <laughs> it was well, a I bad mean, day. Yeah, yeah, he had a bad day. It's a, no, shitty, yeah, it's yeah. a shitty day, man. Got right. a war declared on you, treason. Lost a uh, son. Lost but a it's like the Michael Irving daughter. video. You, you know the what? Michael Irving video? When well, he's like, what are you prepared to do? <laughs> they're talking about you like you're trash. That's what I wanted Damon <laughs> season two. Get your shit together, man. You got some games to win. Well, that's what. Well, that's what. When I said, I was, like, I wanted more from Damon. You kind of felt him maturing through the season. Yes. And then this episode, yeah, you found out some real shitty news, and it's like all that went out the window. Right, which could happen. Yeah, but, but I, was, I didn't want it to happen to him. It was abrupt. Yeah, and a bit jarring and a little inconsistent. But like I said, overall, I really love this episode. The more I think about it, so just minor criticisms I have. Oh, I think it's a really good episode. I think most people take it as a strong finale going into it i was a little scared you, like people who watch the leaks you heard like character assassinations and <laughs> like all this other stuff and i'm like and that's why when i watch it i'm like i don't see this at all and that's why i was kind of not defensive but i was trying to point it out in the regular review i'm like like that nothing close to that occurred here um and it just i think sometimes yeah, character assassination that's a little yeah bit too far. Who would, I think it's it was weird. It's, it, it, Who got it felt like on that? some Damon, Damon and oh. a, or and Damon, Damon and Damon. And, oh. and I feel people like didn't love the choking. They also didn't love that it was an accident. Even though I there's think a reason why they did that though. I the mean, accident to I'm me is a, up on. a better change well, rather than him just being bloodthirsty. Well, they're trying to prove a point that you can't control dragons. Is, right. Isn't that what they're trying to prove? Yes. Like, I feel like there's always the a point proven. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Well, I was thinking about this earlier. You see Vagar, every time Vagar lands on something, it just gets destroyed. How much is that costing them in infrastructure? <laughs> what are these dragons doing here? They serve no other purpose except to hold on to the throne, hold on to just to reinforce Targaryen rule. The ultimate other than that, if you just, don't have yeah. dragons, if you don't have the dragons, well, you have an, an army and you're going to go to war a lot more. <laughs> it's like Well, it took them like another 130 years to realize, oh, we don't have to listen to them. They don't have dragons anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah they, they still sat on the throne for like another century and they're like wait a minute what the fuck why are we still bowing to these weirdos <laughs> they're purple eyes you guys got your answer too there's like 
16 dragons out there. Yes, I love that. Them naming Sheep Stealer and a Silver Wing, and they didn't mention the cannibal by name, but the cannibal's the best one. All the memes about Vagar getting PTSD as soon as she got hit with the flames was so funny. <laughs> she went back into war mode. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, we talked about it a little bit, but... Arix's fucking survival instincts are trash. It's like you you were yeah, getting away move. just to come back and like just give it a little like basically I don't even know like the perspective wise what that breath of fire felt like was like for Vagar. Just like a like lighting a lighter in front of her. It's like, <laughs> oh well, that was uncomfortable for a second. Oh man, I mean okay, all right, we're playing around. You come back and eat her? You eat the dragon? I don't think she thought they were playing. This wasn't no, like, two puppies in the... It's like me fighting a three-year-old. I'm not going to actually fight them. I mean, come on, Vagar. Have a little, like... Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Here. A three-year-old, like, hit you with, like, their toy, and you just took it and threw it out of the yeah. uh, threw out of the window. I mean, Vagar needs some discipline. You got to show some, some restraint. You come back and eat the dragon? Yeah, mm, maybe the they could have just... I don't know if... Lucerus needed to lose control of Arax to bring that seam home. It's enough for Aemon to lose control because that's when it becomes really disturbing. Uh, even if Arax didn't lose control, maybe Vagar sweeps in and still eats them and obliterates them, right? <laughs> but I guess the... <laughs> that's <laughs> the best way to call it, man. Yo, they, it really is. Vagar ripped them to shreds. Bro, it, Vagar's maybe, mouth covered the entire dragon. Like, seeing the parts, <laughs> it, felt, it felt like something popped. It was just I like... Know, dude. <sighs> and the screech? Yeah. And the size of Vagar, dude. <laughs> See, that's Just a mass. The CGI. That's one thing that, that incredible. Annoyed me. That did it kind of throw you guys off? Like it kind of felt like it was like a like a crappy superhero movie. When like when they're riding and like he's laughing and chasing him. He was a little goofy. You know, give me, give me that. that eye. You did it. He's he did. a goofy superhero villain. You have a that's death what to it felt pay, like. an old yeah. Valerian. Yeah, he's he's a cartoon villain. He's a little mustache twirly. I mean, he's got a fucking eye patch. He, he put a sapphire in it. That's so ridiculous. Everything about this man is ridiculous. He's we've said it before. He's cosplaying his uncle, so he always has to take that to the extreme. It's not enough that I have an eye patch. I need to put a fucking jewel in it so I can intimidate you even more. Even though I have the weirdest and scariest looking face. You know what I was thinking? If Damon would have went to Storm's End and not conversation with Damon and Aemon. I can guarantee you Eamon wouldn't have even spoken two words. No? No. You, like, you have the biggest dragon, but that's also Damon. Well, and Caraxes is no one to fuck with. Well, Damon's going to the Riverlands, right? That's what he said? Yeah. And I was also thinking, too, about other characters. Like, if Rob Stark was in that situation and he rolled up into that, like, I don't think he's taking shit from Eamon or Boros. Or, like, at least he's coming back with something. Like, they were never messed up sending Lucerus. I mean, I know you want to send him maybe just to... I don't know. I don't even know why you sent them. But you think she messed up sending him Reaffirm in general? that support. Yeah. yeah, no, she definitely did mess up. Yeah. Even she, the way she... What, a Monday morning quarterback it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think she's sending uh, <laughs> Lucerus. <laughs> but but like, the way she tried to instill confidence in him when she says, they're going to receive you like a prince, there's yeah. going to be a feast, they're going to be in awe of your dragon. Meanwhile, there's just the best dragon ever already there. <laughs> Fuck, literally a living legend. One of the dragons that carved they, up these kingdoms and then put yeah. them together. The, store, the the troops seemed so unfazed, too, when he pulled up. It's like they're used to it. Oh, you know, like, yeah. Vagar like, pulled up. It's like it's like he beat the sh he beat them with the shiny toy. Like, he, <laughs> like Aemon beat Lucerus there <laughs> and, like, took all the excitement out when they saw Lucerus it. is like, sauce doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> dragon's fine. That was just such a horrifying way to reveal it as well. And the way the camera pans mm -hmm. and then pans back to Luke and then Luke's just l overlooking his shoulder... <laughs> Like, are, are you going away now? <laughs> Please leave. No, I saw some people point out, like, the comparison to uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> and, yeah, it, it's just perfect. That and just the shadow of him above him was just insane. The, the, the way they differentiate the sizes, like, when, when you think dragon, you think big. They're huge. But then when you showed that size comparison with him and Vagar, or her, I don't know, is, is his, was his dragon a girl or a boy? Arix? Yeah. Anyone know? Could go with boy. All right. When they show that size comparison with them two, I'll yeah. say them too. With them two. <laughs> also, what was was Drogon on steroids? Because Luke's dragon's like fourteen, and he's that little. Meanwhile, Daenerys's dragons are like four, <laughs> and they're just bosses. She had them working, man. <laughs> they were marching. They were, Maybe you just you know? a yeah, better breed of dragon, I guess. Yeah, right. They grew up in the trenches. <laughs> they didn't, they weren't coddled in the dragon pit, you know. Eating grapes. Yeah, they're sleeping <laughs> on the floor and eating <laughs> eating kids and shit. <laughs> 
They didn't even have a home until like Marine. <laughs> it's like the athlete that was chasing chickens versus the yeah. rich athlete <laughs> who's in the gym. <laughs> That's Drogo. No, uh, Rock, Rocky and uh, Drago. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's and out the, in the fucking mountains. And the more I see dragon riders in this show, the more unexcusable it becomes that none of those dragons had saddles. I know. Right. And especially because the saddles are so nice. Can ride them like a horse. What was the Nerys holding? Pointy ass <laughs> scale. Yeah, yeah. There's no way her hands. First of all, they were extremely calloused mm-hmm. after that. Probably bleeding after every flight. Are you tell me those spikes aren't uncomfortable to sit on. Yeah. I mean, I feel yeah. like. And, and there's I, no way you're not being flung off. At the speed. They showed that too, though. They showed how hard it is. Well, I mean, I, it feels so weird talking about the show because it's all fake. I know. It's like, it feels really. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's like they show how hard it is to ride a dragon, especially in those conditions. Like, like Luke almost fell off a couple times. It's not easy to ride them and hold yeah, on. Yeah, he's struggling, man, that you know? dragon. He's pumping his wings. He's <laughs> flapping for his fucking life. Let alone, I mean, you have Vagar chasing you, but it's the storm that you have to beat first. So. He made a good move, too, going through the trenches. Yeah, right. I thought that was the end gliding. of it. And then, I mean, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the suspense of that whole scene, yeah. man. I, I wanted to turn it off at one point. I'll come back to this in like 20, 30 minutes. I need to collect <laughs> myself, especially because I knew how it was going to end. But did You, you didn't feel like that with the... Uh... The miscarriage scene? Oh, that I did look away. I'm, yeah, getting, at I, one I'm point, getting sick of it. Um, <laughs> personally, I mean, I love the show. Uh, I'm getting sick of the miscarriage scenes. I can't keep watching that. I mean, come on. Can we not? Can we just, like, cut to the, like, after it and say uh, we, had, we had a miscarriage? Like, Right, and it's something that happens. Some of the dead, dead fetus coming out? Yeah, it's something that's more talked about in Game of Thrones, that mothers losing children and mothers losing their own life during childbirth, but... It's played a more integral part of the story in House of the Dragon. What are they trying to prove or show? Well, There's a reason the, why they're doing this. With Rhaenyra there, I think it's she gets sent into early labor because of the news. It yeah. overwhelms her, and then she loses a child. So that even as a, you know, when you're a woman and you're put in this position as a ruler, you're also in a position of being a mother, of being a parent, of bearing children. And that's something that they talked about in that first episode, that the role of a woman in this society is to have children. So right now she's on kid number six. Yeah. Is that not enough at this point? It's just <laughs> uh, as many as you can have, you just have them. Uh, that's sort of your role to not only just it's it's your role to solidify your power to establish heirs and so if something happens to the oldest there's another one I'll tell you what I would have gotten the same feeling if they would have just skipped that and said we had a miscarriage well I think <laughs> too with her screaming I would have while, felt that same consequence I had to see it though when you hear the screams while they're planning the preliminary stages of their plan to counter the greens um i think that was well done in two ways obviously to the two situations kind of going hand in hand with together i feel like it was just the back and forth was just the like you know it just showed the weight of the situation like all this is going on and yeah. she has she has to deal with this and also kind of the looks the characters the male characters are giving to each other i think it just it's like oh well yeah that's that's, us. that's yeah like what that's us <laughs> yeah no we but can't just, stomach it <laughs> but i feel like in a way it's presented as like that's our leader in there like not here she's somewhere else going through something that you know the men of the realm don't have to go through and you don't really you wouldn't hear um damon s- screaming in pain throughout the halls or something like that and i think that's some of the hesitancy they have when she first walks in and she has to prove herself to she be still pulls up a capable leader that. yeah and i think that gets her a lot of respect no because days. when she's walking in you know, it's something very new, I'm sure. I mean, obviously, they've taken orders from her, but now she is the the queen. So let's see what she's going to do in this situation, how she's going to maneuver. And I think she slowly builds com- – not slowly, but builds confidence throughout the episodes with not just herself, but with the people that are following her now. And you see that, how that translated to Rainey's and how that got Corliss involved. So Right, yeah, she does win Corliss and Rainey's over to her side because of – the composure that she's showing. And with Corliss, he's someone who's flown too close to the sun and has lost everything because of it. So I guess that reassures him that he's going to be following a leader who's not solely doing this because of ambition. They want to do it the right way, a reasonable way, if you can even say that, in war. So that ends up being their most valuable acquisition because of their fleet, because of their power, and the respect that he commands. He walked in here like he was... Everyone stopped. They were anticipating what he was going to say. They yeah. want to know what the hell's going on with him. And I said that, I think, in episode five, when he walked into the wedding, it feels like he's the real king. And in this moment, you saw those qualities as well. The, the respect that he commands, the knowledge that he holds, 
and he's a seasoned warrior. So as soon as he commits to Rhaenyra's cause, he's game planning. He said, we got oh, the step yeah. stones, we can do this, this, and this. Shut so, that trade off. Shut right. them down. And I, I think that's fun to see them forming this super team. I love how he's hyping him up and like um basically um because Rainey's was saying like, "Oh, like you'd left me," but he was justifying his abandonment. <laughs> and it's like, "Yeah, well, if only if we had the stepstones." Oh wait, I got <laughs> them. <laughs> Come on, give it up, give it up. <laughs> yeah, their relationship to me it definitely has suffered because of the time jumps. Well, it's been six years for us. It's a couple episodes, but I know. it's been six years that he's been gone. It is hilarious it's crazy the way he woke time. up in the bed, the way he's looking at her. It's it's kind of just funny. <laughs> um. Even him accepting what happened to, like he knew he wasn't pissed at Damon. Like he knew what his brother said is a death sentence, and he understood. He understood it, and he could have just not backed Rhaenyra because of that. But you know, he he realized how bad the shit he, his brother was saying, and he put that aside, and for the bigger cause, this is the war, and he has to pick the right side. Yeah, the scenes between Rhaenys and Corlys, even though the actors do have good chemistry with each other, it feels like every scene with them, they're just cramming in so much story stuff and Mm -hmm. characterization of what they want, how they are feeling, and especially in this scene. In their eyes, Damon is responsible or indirectly (laughs) responsible for the death of four of their family members. (laughs) It's all justified, though. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well... The Lanor thing is just funny to me because even when R- Rhaenys is giving Rhaenyra that smile after Corlys reaffirms his support, I don't know. It, it feels like she really likes Rhaenyra. <laughs> that she's just her grandma, even though maybe she killed my son. Ah, uh, that was Damon. They probably think. Yeah, that was Damon. Even Part though they said that, that she was complicit. <laughs> but, but there is like. Part of me thinks that Rhaeny- uh, Rhaenys knows that he's alive. I mean, there Part is. That's how that. they're sort of playing it. But there's no reason that she should know that. Yeah. And if she did know that, you would think it would make her even angrier. But with what, their DNA in Westeros? Well, what they've witnessed was Carl killing their son. Like, that was witnessed. So, I mean, you can have your suspicions, but maybe they're like... Maybe she didn't. Maybe she didn't. You know, she promised them, promised her in the gods with that she didn't. That, that goes a long way, right? I swear to, I swear to the seven? Or <laughs> I, didn't do I don't it. know. If she, she did swear that she had nothing to do with it. No, no, oh, no, never mind. But they keep bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> I just hated Lenor. <laughs> right. <laughs> she seemed upset at the time. But I think that could have benefited those characters, a scene where they get a little bit deeper into that, where they try and rationalize it, try and make sense of it. But it, it's, it happens a bit too quickly. But I do think Steve Toussaint in this episode was the best he's been as Corliss. I mentioned this on the first review. They're back and forth. I was really impressed with the writing there of who's going to get the the leg up, and finally Rhaenyra does convince him. So he was great. And like I said, he really does command that room when he walks in, and then he realizes, okay, I'm going to play the supporting role here. So all of that was fun. We got a kick out of the first council when Damon says, we've got all these dragons, we've got Melees, and it pans to Rhaenys, and she's like, we (laughs) got who that's bold of you okay but yeah that's going to be fun because she's got this warrior vibe to her i mean obviously she had the great moment in episode nine when she's got the armor on and she is on dragon back so is this gonna be a rainiest takeover next season (laughs) yo can you control yourself (laughs) what (laughs) i'm just saying every podcast is either you're smirking at me (laughs) there you were doing like a like you were trying wine with nothing (laughs) (laughs) I never know what I'm going to get when I look over at you. He's cracking the wrist. I don't know what I was doing, actually. But he was nodding at me and going like this. (laughs) I was was nodding at Teddy what he was saying, but I was kind of just... Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I I, I can't see. I I was talking to you. Are you saying, like, hurry up? No, no. It looked like he was trying to, like, muster up a point. So that's why I stopped. I was thinking. And then then you back. Because then you stopped. You just got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, you know, but when you're doing this, it's like... Okay, no, I'm trying to, to get an idea going. <laughs> no, that would have been super offensive. I yeah. would have cried. Would you have stepped in? He was doing it to me. I was the one talking. You oh. weren't talking. Well, you make it about yourself. Yeah, I wasn't saying something? Don't worry about us. <laughs> I was talking, wasn't yeah, I? Where, no, I was talking. Talk then you cut me here. off. He played back? You disrespected me. You're already worrying about <laughs> if Aaron disrespected you. <laughs> it's a circle of disrespect. But yeah, Rainius is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's undeniably hot. What? Come on. You're into that? Hell yeah. Are you kidding me? You saw her in pants when she had pants on? I'm into Emma, though. Emma's dead. 
No, I'm a Darcy. I'm a Dar. Oh, right. oh, uh, oh. I'm, a, I'm into Rhaenyra now. I thought you meant her mom. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you're questioning me about Rhaenyra. <laughs> no, dude, Emma is hot too, <laughs> and Rhaenyra. I mean, some of those shots of her with the crown, just like oh yeah. Well, they know what they're working with because they love those close-ups yeah. with Rhaenyra. They're like, she's got a good face. It's like Chalamet and Dune. All those close-ups, bro. I saw a side by side with uh. Allison, young, young Allison, and young uh, Rhaenyra, and you know they cast the hell out of that. Yeah, they look exact. They look like what they would look like if when they grow up. They did a great job. Yeah, I think a lot of people were worried that maybe they wouldn't love Emma as much as they've loved Millie, but for the most part, I think most people are really satisfied with her portrayal. Maybe they have critiques of the writing at times, but the portrayal is magnificent. Yeah. The way that she wears the dread of her circumstances in this episode during the coronation. It's arguably her lowest moment, just lost her father, lost another child, but or lost her f- first child. And you see it all over her face, man. It, it's like she's, the dread is physically holding her back uh, and wearing her down. But she has that nice pick-me-up when Sir Eric comes with her father's crown. And that sort of solidifies her resolve to continue as as queen, to lead these people, because they all bend the knee. And it's more than just symbolic, it's we do believe in you as a ruler and we will that's follow why, you. That's why hers felt more meaningful than Aegon's. Right, even though Aegon's it's more just haphazardly like, put together, it's not as grandiose. Yeah. It was kind of felt like the sheep were just following and they were all cheering for him, which, so it didn't really mean nothing, but with Rhaenyra's, you know, they're in a Those worse predicament. Yeah, Those and, aren't sheep. Those yeah. are fighters. <laughs> well, the, the stinking rotten small folk... <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's none of those there at Dragonstone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all they care about is like, well, like... Um, Inflation. Well, no, <laughs> like how Otto said, like the symbols of legitimacy. It's like, is that the Conqueror's sword? That is. Exa- and yeah, the crown? Exactly. Wow. He must be king. That's yeah. the king. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hers felt earned when his was just like he had, he has everything, so let's just name him king. I like the contrast of Jaharis and Viserys not wearing the Conqueror's crown with both of them being known as two of the most peaceful kings. It's a nice little contrast there. And then that's passed down to Rhaenyra. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's cheesy, but my dad's with me in this moment, right? I mm-hmm. get to carry on his legacy. Well, you're seeing her. You're seeing how much influence he had in her and how much she learned from him. You know? It's- yeah, that's the thing about Viserys. He makes a lot of mistakes, and at times he's a bit of a pushover, but he's he wasn't dumb. He understood his history probably better than anybody in that show. So that advice that he gave Rhaenyra, it shows in this episode, like you mentioned, when Damon says your father's you know that's your father speaking and she goes my father's dead so don't forget that i'm my own person too even though i was influenced by my father but it's clear it's it's the impact that ned stark had on all his children yeah. throughout game of thrones right yeah they never shut up about him <laughs> i think yeah i know but that's why i love that character so much man <laughs> even the last seasons they're still they still talk about him. yeah father always his did name. say you would come <laughs> <laughs> ned was a great dad i miss viserys he was they're in heaven now. Viserys and Ned? Yeah. <laughs> well, Ned, not yet. He will I miss be, seeing him work on his little statue. I know. I do. <laughs> you know, what I happened to that? Viserys. He stopped working on it. I know, but what, what, where does it go? <laughs> it's probably oh, destroyed now. not keeping that in a oh, they sold that. Yeah, they put that on for auction. <laughs> that happened right after Rainey's destroyed the dragon. Pit. No, you know what happened? <laughs> they gave it to uh, Helena, and it's like a little ant farm. <laughs> <laughs> I would like that. Yeah. Poor Elena. I, I don't want to skip ahead to season two or speculations on season two, but you guys might know. Are we going to get, like, is it going to veer off of the House of the Dragon now? Like, are we going to get more insight on other houses? Oh, through, yeah. Through and I, I think it's like, going is to... it going to turn into something else rather than just House Targaryen? No, the other houses House Targaryen are... House is blowing up right now. Yeah, the other houses are going to be more involved. Okay. And they're going to establish more characters. There's more characters at Dragonstone that they've yet to reveal that are going to play big roles moving forward. So, yeah, they're going to bring on more characters, more houses, more locations. And that's what Ryan Condal had talked about, that it's going to feel more like season three, where you're getting these different perspectives, different mm-hmm. settings. So they're going to open up the world here. It is a war that encompasses. Like that well, I think it, it's going to be fun, and it will depend on how well these characters are developed. That's yeah. what the original Game of Thrones did so well, is you felt like you were watching a different show when you would change perspective, but you didn't mind it. You were never taken out of the big picture. All of this was working towards one final puzzle, 
which ended up being absolute shit. But still, when it was <laughs> revving that, that along, doesn't sound so promising. When it was humming along, <laughs> but I think the difference is with this story, it is finished. So it's not like we're waiting on right. a book. The ending is very clear. If they fuck this up, then I'm not going to make any predictions. But there's no way they can fuck this up. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost but like yeah, they were but, in Game of Thrones. They were humming until week fifteen when they lost the quarterback, and then right, yeah, Plaxico shot himself in the thigh. All of a sudden, <laughs> you're out the first week of playoffs. So, uh, yeah, still haunts. Yeah, <laughs> it does. People were saying they want to see that, like the the table at Dragonstone, be the intro. Hell yeah, that'd be sick. That was a great scene though when when, when they lit the candles, the older candles, and they slid it under. That was so fucking. Don't yeah. you guys think if they the... sell those? I, I think I need one. <laughs> I don't like that. I couldn't see anything. I, I couldn't really see it. I mean, I know what I was looking at, but I couldn't really see like the locations. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I don't know how they're seeing it. Like old jumble mess. The mess. No, the up. best map so far was Cersei's map in the Red Keep. That was an easy map, fun map, very best detailed. M- no, this map so much nicer. No, in terms or... of just being able to yeah. f- know where everything is, this yeah. is a night. This is. It had little bumps on it. To... <laughs> yeah, the topography, <laughs> topography there. Topography, yeah. Where did you pull that from? Topography? I'm surprised I was able to say it. Yeah, I mean, like, like, like I, w- I was going to say I'm thinking about I it. I swear to God, I was going to say <laughs> a, to- a topographical map, yeah. but I'm like, that's not the right one, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so were you mad when you said it? When yeah, very. I was pissed. <laughs> my dad and myself, and you were able you to slid steal it. came in yeah. and swooped that, dude. <laughs> I always liked those globes in class, the ones with the little Me bumps too. on it, yeah. I miss being a janitor. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell was I was thinking of a point now I can't remember it. <laughs> you just implied that while you were a janitor, you would sneak I, into classrooms well, and feel the globes. I, all right, I, I, when I was a janitor, I would 100% <laughs> pull the maps down like I was a teacher. And I was like... Pretend? Yeah. <laughs> not, not pretend like I'm a teacher. I would pull the map down, I'd like roll it up and feel it, you know, look at it. What did I you think cool. of uh, Vermithor? What did you think about that scene? Badass, dude. Yeah. Bad. I think it's huge. Well, the scale, the so way... So is that his dragon now? So he's kicking his dragon to the side? <laughs> I can't get by that. What? It's Teddy just going in and pulling out You never wanted to pull the map down? I mean, I'm picturing a teacher walking in. like, what are you doing? And you're like pretending to teach <laughs> shake less. <laughs> I shoot it back up. <laughs> Hits you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so is that his dragon now? And he's kicking his dragon to the side? Or is that just on their team? No, well, what he said was, I think he does mention that they're unclaimed dragons. Right. Is so that means one of them? Daenerys did have three, but that was a little different. I think they all sort of just followed Drogon's lead. Right. So I don't think this is a spoiler. That's not Damon's dragon. Oh. He's warming him up, though. I think he's warming him up for the possibility of, we're going to let you out of your cage, and uh, hopefully, <laughs> all of a sudden, Allison's other son claims him. <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn it. <laughs> Hey, Vagar, what's up, man? Long time. So who gets Vermithor? Well, we will see, I guess, right? In season two, we have to wait. But the scale, I mean. Oof. But the CGI has been so incredible. And the flame, the way that he's singing and Vermithor is basically celebrating, in a way. Yeah. He's literally putting his lighter up. I mean, in certain aspects, <laughs> I feel like the CGI in, has been a little shaky, but always with the dragons, which I think is most important. They made a point for these to look b- fucking breathtaking. And I love the shot of Damon in the dragon's eye. The dragon in Damon's eye kind of looked like Damon had dragon eyes because he saw the reflection yeah. of the scale. It was really well it's done. Like Sauron's eye. And I think they used the volume for the chase sequence. Yeah. Which is well, kinda... did you like that CGI, Mister uh, <laughs> CGI expert over here? Well, I think that looked the best because you, <clears> you, <throat> you said... defend a Marvel movie to your death. I say Marvel doesn't look great. I say it. But I'm just saying when you take a still frame and nitpick every little piece, you could do that with everything. Um, if you go in there, if you go into it wanting to see something bad, you'll see. Yeah, it. sure. Yeah. And I don't think anything's been. The only time I, I kind of noticed was when Rainey's broke through the dragon pit. It's only bad when it ta- when like when you're watching it and it just takes you out of the scene. That's the only time I think it's bad. And even when it's bad, it's not like doesn't doesn't kill me, and I don't hate to see it because of it. But even the dragon teeth, like they're supposed to be like like basically just thousands of swords in their mouth, and that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Ooh. Just like if you go in that, it's like you're getting. So no chance loses uh, Luke's alive. It's alive in the stomach. What's stronger, a dragon tooth or Valerian steel? Have they ever answered that? I don't Are there know. No dragon tooth weapons. There's a dragon That'd tooth a dagger in weapon, um. Dude. Is it Dune? I'd rock the yeah. hell out of that. Let's get the worm, the worm tooth. You taking a worm or a dragon? <laughs> I guess the setting <laughs> matters. Yeah. Well, well I mean, worm? Authors, they're gigantic, aren't they? Aren't they the? But a dragon. The worm you go on the ground. 
you pop up out of nowhere. You know the meme you can it's breathe, like, understand? would you still love me you if I turned... You get one of those mess, no? You know those... Yeah, not, yeah, that's not a bad idea. You know the memes like, would you still love me if I turned into a worm? <laughs> yeah, Shai Halut. <laughs> uh, that would actually be a funny-ass tweet. I think the answer is... I think it's probably been done. Um, but then the right answer is no, because you're a fucking worm. If you turn into a dragon, yes. So a dragon over worm. Alaskan bullworm. All right, donkey. <laughs> and dragon's cool. You're trying to fuck a dragon. <laughs> if I could. <laughs> we talked about it, like, literally episode two. Like, there's definitely been a Targaryen that tried to fuck a dragon. Oh, yeah. I could see it. That was the extended scene with Damon and Vermithor. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't... The, the uh, editor's cut? <laughs> <laughs> They cut, they cut out the son of him embracing his children after their mother died, but leaving him getting fucking dogged <laughs> out by a dragon. I love the way the the idea of the dragons doing the dogging out. <laughs> I mean, you think Damon? I don't know. I don't, his I'm, whole body probably. It, it's even. like in uh, the boys, the first scene of the boys. What's what happens? Oh yeah, when he goes, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, dragon it's in Shrek. It's in Shrek with Donkey and the oh, dragon. Yeah. Well, they don't show it. No, it is a kids movie. But the babies are half donkey, half yeah. dragon, so... I think it's implied that it was an artificial insemination. <laughs> I think they, they, okay. they cover that. I can sit... I can sleep soundly <laughs> at night now. <laughs> That's always been something I've thought about. Anything else you guys want to discuss with this episode? <laughs> nah, I'm thinking about that dragon bussy. <laughs> <laughs> How calm Auto was, though. I mean, we can go back to it. How calm he was on the. Uh, it was almost like he, he's he's believing. He he knows what he's doing is wrong, and he's believing it. And he's just so calm and confident about what he's saying to Rhaenyra, even though it's treason. And it's, when they call it princess, that bothered me. It's like no, it's queen, or even Baros Baratheon. Yeah, trying to delegitimize her a little bit. Yeah, still calling her queen. That's right. Not Luke is like, queen. well, the queen. I'm like, there you go, Luke. Yeah, right. Uh, I love Damon's response to Otto's terms about your kids can be cupbearers and squires, yeah. and he said he'd rather feed them to dragons than <laughs> carry a cup for your drunken cunt of a king. <laughs> Otto's like, okay, well, I guess that's a no. I think that's treason, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying There's is so much treason. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you're committing treason. No, you're committing treason. <laughs> There's treason to go around. And Rhaenyra, that was democracy. emotional. I because wish it was. I know there still is treason, but it's not the same. Now, like when I feel like I feel like someone gets. Tre- Did Oswald get treason? Is that treason? Killing that's kind of treason, as you would think. Yeah, that's treason. When I think of treason, that's what I think of. Inside job, though. I believe that. Lee Harvey. <laughs> well, uh, killing JFK. I thought you were talking about John Wilkes Booth. What to say? That also may have been inside job, but yeah, that's not yeah. there. You're there. <laughs> For Rhaenyra to have a person who's been by her father's side all of these years she was best friends with this person's and the child that shot too a mentor somebody that okay maybe they didn't have the best relationship but it was somebody to look up to somebody to help guide Rhaenyra they did have that sort of relationship when she was younger so yeah he betrays her and the motion does come out that I was complaining that they were caught a little bit off guard but maybe they were maybe they made the mistake of giving these people the benefit of the doubt and Otto tells her you and your father are the only two people in the kingdoms who didn't know that Aegon was going to succeed him <laughs> and so, Allison apparently <laughs> yeah yeah right and Allison <laughs> so I guess sometimes giving the benefit of your of the doubt to people in this world can come back to bite you and it definitely did in that moment but once again Emma Darcy's performance so good so strong all the emotion coming out, taking off the pin, th- getting fucking rid of it. Just you know what fuck it is? You. What a great... <laughs> that, that's, it's a good voice That's cast. exactly what I envisioned in my head when she did that. Everyone like, has Screw a, you, man. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking dick. Everyone has a nice voice. Yeah. Yeah. And Emma's may be the best. There's something so hypnotic about yeah. their voice. Did you guys... I guess we're going back a little bit, but did you guys get the feeling that, like, in episode nine, they... It's pretty clear cut that they're making the Greens as the antagonists and and this one the protagonists. But I mean, it's very it's like on the head. Why are you <laughs> laughing, man? Because aren't they trying to make it make you do your own like make you feel like they both have a right to it? I feel like the Greens have been set up as the antagonists since like episode one. Well, I think <laughs> not really. With a lot of maybe not Al- maybe not a specific character, maybe not Allison, but as a whole, I think they were pretty much set up as. Well, I'm saying now it's pretty it's pretty clear cut that they're like they want you to root for Rhaenyra. Yeah, and I think they kind of, especially with the <coughs> ending. <laughs> I think it's always been Rhaenyra. I think certain changes, especially with the whole Laner thing, like if they left that more into the open, or like where the audience is kind of 
on Rainey's side where it's like we don't know, but like she probably did it. Right. Um, I think making that change, or not even a change, because like in the books, it's still a little unclear. But if you leave that doubt in the audience's mind, like you kind of think that you know both sides have done wrong here, so it's more of an even playing field. But I mean, just look at Eamon. Like that's just a villain. Yeah. Yeah, but my my point is that it felt like all season they were trying to make you pick a side, but they're making it hard now because of everything nah, that I think the Greens was, are doing. I think early, even with Allison, like even in the younger version, when they have that disconnect, I think a lot of people were just like, okay, these are the bad but guys. But you can make the argument that Allison didn't mean to oh, yeah, sure. win over Viserys. Though. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we talked about that a lot, so I think with her specifically, but I think Otto has always been a, very shady for people. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, Laris is Laris, and with Aegon and Aemon kind of seeing what they've turned into, yeah, I think it's becoming become increasingly clear as the seasons progressed. But um, I don't know if they some things you can see the other side on, but I don't know. Uh, I saw a tweet that I resonate with, and it was I support everything that she's gonna do, and it makes sense because of what's happening to her. And I I bet you she does some serious shit, and I'm not gonna care because of what they did, because of what of how they made me feel with Rhaenyra. Well, people still defend Daenerys. Yeah, and that's why I think it is fun that they showed uh, Aemon being shocked by right. what Vagar did, and I said that it was more disturbing of him losing control of the dragon rather than having the intent to kill him, because it goes to that's your point. foreshadowing what the fuck's gonna happen, man. Yeah, <laughs> that at the end of the day, these are sentient predators with their own instincts, their own minds. They're going to do things that you can't stop. I mean, what the fuck are you... He, You know, the way he cries out, Vagar! No, that's falling on deaf ears. Shit's already done. You know, we got to take him to the hospital, patch him up. So his, the look on his face that he is definitely set up as somebody who's unhinged, possibly a psychopath. And if he's going to be this tormented figure moving forward, I think that makes him a bit more fascinating, where this is something that haunts him, and it doesn't haunt him in a way where he's trying to rectify for his mistakes, but he goes even deeper down that path of darkness, mm-hmm. of being this, of what everybody already perceives him to be. And that's always been this interesting There's no explaining what he did Thrones. in general, too. There's no explaining it. Oh, no. So no, it's like, yeah. no one's you know, going to believe him. So it's like and he, even if you do, well, like, oh, I was just trying why to would fuck, fuck with Why are you him? chasing him? Yeah, yeah. Why, would, why would you do that when you know he's got a baby-ass dragon and you got Big Mama? Hmm. Like Mama Dukes. No, and even in the book, that's something that Allison and Otto get pissed about. They scold him. They tell him he's a fucking idiot, and Aegon throws him a feast. <laughs> 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 Which kind of tracks for this version of Aegon. I could definitely see that in episode one of season yeah. two of them screaming at him, saying, telling him, you just started a fucking war, and Aegon's like, fuck it. Let's, let's do this. Fuck it, let's go to war. Yeah. Fuck it, we ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar to Joffrey. Off with his Was head. It? I apologize. I didn't know that way. <laughs> yeah, he says that to Eamon. I was familiar with your game. <laughs> I was familiar with you. <laughs> Eamon had to say that to Vagar. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Luke had to say that to Vagar. Yeah, in the afterlife. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. Fucking Eamon, man. And it does suck for Jace, right? That he's going to get that news. It's going to be he's... like Jon Snow getting the news about Ned or getting the news about Rob or getting the news about Bran or getting the news about... <laughs> <laughs> well... That's a By bad, the way, the, that's a bad run the for lack John, of dude. reaction for John. I knew you were going to go that way. <laughs> it's so fucking annoying. <laughs> that was my brother. You're my brother's dad. I like the way he eulogized him in that scene. Well, another Tuesday in Westeros. <laughs> no, he gives the story about how Rob was always better than him. At I know. Getting but it, girls and playing games. And he's, ref- he's filling Sam in on what his brother meant no to him. Impact. I thought there was a strong impact. And even vice I versa. I think sometimes people, they grieve in different ways. And, and at that I, point, you lose somebody like that. It's you it puts you into shock. Well, I mean, we saw it. But also, we saw how how they both how Rhaenyra. But and, Rob is never mentioned. I guess, no, again. no, we're not talking about this anymore, right? Or barely. <laughs> Rob is barely mentioned. Again. Yeah, we've gone back <laughs> to Rob and John. Yeah, because he's a bum. What are they going to mention? Oh, Rob got his fucking head chipped. There was oh, father. Yeah. Well, well, what advice did Rob ever give them? <laughs> Stick him with the no. That was uh, no. That was. Yeah. <laughs> What, no, no, they don't mention Rob ever again. <laughs> they really, he's just gone. And I think like, uh, no, one of them mentions it during John's coronation. They're like, "Remember that bum Rob who lost us the North?" <laughs> but even before John Rob dies the in the wedding. books, when he names John as his successor, like that's fucking sick as hell. And it shows how Rob felt about John. Yeah, that's Rob something never they thought about in. John after he left either. No, he didn't. That's something they could have kept. What's in. that bastard's name? The one that Dad brought? You hated him. <laughs> 
Callan's Dragon. like, um, I, I forget to actually. James? Ah, James. I wonder how he's doing up north. Oh, Jimmy Stark. <laughs> oh, Jimmy Snow. Jimmy, Jimmy Snow. Snow sounds like a Coke dealer from Miami. <laughs> All right, let's get back to House of the Dragon. We're going to, we're going to look to wrap this but he's up. He's not but, good uh, at it. No, he's, he's like, getting oh, arrested get that? all the time. <laughs> where'd you get that shit from? It's like, oh, Jimmy Snow. I was like, oh, fucking cut with oh, Mike. Oh, boy. <laughs> that has fentanyl. Yes. <laughs> Jimmy Snow <laughs> cuts with fentanyl. Another victim of Jimmy Snow. Yeah, I mean, anything else you guys want to Ramsey touch on? Ramsey Snow, that shit's pure. Oh, I don't know about that. Ramsey's <laughs> definitely putting shit in his. <laughs> no, it's so the only pure. pure he's Dorn's. Dorn has it. Say that again. Dor- the only way I'd buy is if Dorn's selling it. <laughs> All the shit from Dorn is nice, man. The Dornish wine. No, I like how the. I feel like I would like Dornish wine. It's always described as having a little kick to it. You had the Arbor Gold, the Arbor Reds. Ooh. Mm. I remember you saying uh, Dorn took out like the first dragon or the only dragon. We're talking. You said Dorn took out a dragon. What dragon was it? So one of Aegon's sisters, actually named Rhaenys, she used to ride a dragon, Meraxes. Okay. And Dorne still, even in this timeline, hasn't been conquered. So it's not part of the Seven Kingdoms. It really is just the Six Kingdoms. It doesn't have the same ring to it. So during one of the Dornish conquests or attempts at conquering Dorne, uh, Meraxes was hit by a spear right through the eye. <laughs> and the story is that Rhaenys fell with Meraxes and also died, but there are a lot of conspiracies that Rhaenys survived and they kept her as a hostage. And that's what deterred Aegon from ever coming back. So there's this scene oh, in, sure. there's a, in Fire and Blood that Aegon received a note from a Dornish messenger. And it, apparently he had no reaction and then never decided or never, he decided never to try and invade Dord again after receiving that note. So the conspiracy is they, they said, hey, we have Rainies. If you come back, we're going to gutter. There's always theories. Like every character who's ever, like Lucerus, I think Mushroom says that he survived, and, but he got amnesia. Now he's just wandering around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's always surviving. I mean, there's Rhaegar conspiracies about surviving. So that's the meme. I'm sorry, I didn't. That, that's <laughs> Aegon said the meme to the, the Shaq. To thing. Dorne. Yeah, yeah that's what they said. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why in uh, the original Game of Thrones, Tywin asks Oberyn to sit on the council because he goes, "Well, the last time dragons invaded, Dorne was the only one to take him out." How'd you guys feel about Daemon and Rhaenyra finding out about what, like, what happened to Luke, but like not actually like, like we don't see how they found out. Damon just comes up and tells it what happened. Did you guys care about that at all, really? Or no, was that, that was actually something? done really well. In the moment, I was wondering, how the hell did they find out? But yeah. I guess you just have to, whatever. Assume they found out. Yeah, eventually yeah. someone's going to, hey, where's Luke? <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's a 20-minute ride. It's been three <laughs> yeah, days. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> My location share is just, <laughs> it's not working. His phone's not on. And that's going to be one of the lasting images, Rhaenyra's face. But I think Damon's actions in that sequence were subtle but effective. The way, like you said, you can kind of tell that he's wiping away tears and he brings her away from the table, grabs her hand. So I thought it was a great way to end the season. Yeah, no, it's that's like we said, like as a motivator, that's just so personal. And I think it's just up, it's up there with any other motivator we've seen. Like even like when Rob gets the news that Ned's dead, like obviously he's angry and he wants to get revenge. But a child is just like a different story especially one like Luke, just so young and spending all this time trying to protect her and thinking you're doing the right thing and sending him um, on this mission. She probably feels a lot of guilt, a lot of anger. So all that emotion is conveyed right then, then and there. And it's such a powerful way to end the season on that last shot. Yeah, and I do want to circle back just quickly to when Rhaenyra tells Damon about the prophecy and he, she has no idea what oh, she's yeah. talking about. That's how Emma Darcy sort of broke down the scene is he reacts that way because he realizes he was never the actual heir because it wasn't something that Viserys felt the need to share with Damon. He was just the placeholder. So I guess Damon in that moment does realize this was never my destiny. It was never in the cards for me. So maybe he does sh- sort of shift after that to becoming a smidge more reasonable. But I thought that was an interesting analysis by Emma Darcy there. Yeah. And you can definitely read that from their, from her reactions in that sequence as well, where she's not really offended by what he did, but she's putting it together. Oh, you were just, you're a bum compared to me. I am the chosen one, <laughs> <laughs> at least in this situation. Uh, so they, they keep bringing up that fucking prophecy to tie it into the main show. I was going to say, they keep, they, they've they been beating that thing to death. I 100%, if Game of Thrones ended beautifully, that's something that would not be as prevalent in this show. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, we're going to come back for a season one spoiler discussion. So we'll probably be dropping that in a few days, and I think that's going to be fun. We'll talk about the first five, the second five. We'll break it up. Uh, we'll take some fan questions, and we'll give our thoughts on where we think the show should head in season two or where it is heading. Overall, great season, though. Fun, entertaining. Great start to a season. Well, I'm not getting into it again. The series, I don't know. <laughs> spinoff. You see them making a spinoff of Sea Snake? Yeah. Yeah, I don't love that. There's so many spinoffs, but... Me neither. I don't want to get... Di- <laughs> I, I think it's, it's going to get diluted. Yeah, I don't want it to become Star Wars and Marvel, where it's a new Game of Thrones show every year. If yeah. it makes sense, if it's a good idea, sure, but... Am I going to watch it? Yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Day one. <laughs> <laughs> Do I want to watch it? Yeah. I mean, it's a fucking Sea Snake. Snake review. Sea Snake spoiler discussion. <laughs> I mean, every, sea Snake live stream. Every time Sea Snake comes on, everyone's like, oh, it's fucking cool, man. He's a cool character. What a cool name. I wonder what, how he did to get it. Here, we'll show it to you. I'll pass. That's basically what you're saying. I'm excited for it. First time we talked about him, you were like, how hard is it to navigate? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you talking navigate about? Navigate the sea? All you did was shit on his exploits. When did I shit on his exploits? When we first did a preview episode, I'm like, yeah, he's known as the best navigator in the Seven Kingdoms. You're like, what does that matter? <laughs> Who cares? How hard could it be? I apologize. I didn't know yeah. <laughs> wasn't <laughs> familiar with this game. I wasn't familiar with this game. We're beating that to The dog. Nine Voyages. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a funny... <laughs> that's a funny meme, though. The way you flip shit, I swear to fucking God, you should have oh, been Oh, he's cool as shit. Maybe, politician. Maybe I'll, uh, I'm excited for it. George is almost three three quarters of the way done when it wins a winter. <laughs> Has looks... that been the story for the last, like, 15 years? Well, if you average it out, he's that means done. we still have another three years to go. Yep. <laughs> it's been 11 years. It's three and a half years for each, uh, each quarter. The winds, are, so it's ice and fire, house, fire and blood, and... The Winds of Winter? No. What is it? <laughs> I don't even know what you're trying to go for. <laughs> what books is he? What, what, what's the, like, the order? It's The Song of Ice and Fire. Yes. That's like the, that's the, the series. ten of them, right? What, the, the five of them? Well, it is? I guess it's supposed to be seven. Okay, then there's Fire and Blood, right? Yep. Or is that part well, of... Well, that's a different... That's not part of the series. That's just a textbook. Isn't that what this is? That's what this is, yeah. But that's not one of the main books. That's not part of the Song of Ice and Fire story. It's a Game of Thrones, Clash of Kings, Storm of Swords, uh, Feast for Crows, okay. Dance of Dragons, okay, and The Winds of Winter, which is yet to be released. Oh. And A Dream of Spring. Mm-hmm. And he's also teased possibly an eighth book. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he ain't getting those out. Uh, yeah. I, the well, Rise of the Dragon just came out. All right, guys, that does it for this episode 10 spoiler discussion. Thank you guys for joining me all season. It's been a fun ride, and we'll be back in two years. What? What? Did you catch that? No, we said. So thanks for joining me all season. Like, we're fucking chopped liver over here. Damn. You guys, I host the podcast, and you guys join me. Oh, I thought you were talking to the fan. Like, thanks for joining us. Oh. No, I was talking to you. Oh, Oh, I thought you were telling the fan. Thanks for joining me. So that's what I oh, got from no, it. Oh, no, no, yeah. Okay, okay. No, I could see how you can read that. <laughs> You're joining me on my episode four solo review. I really carried <laughs> it this season. No, well, thank you, Aaron and Teddy. And, of course, thank the fans for joining us. Let's give it up. Yeah, the fans. Ooh, Actually, look at that. So, so, uh, someone recognized me the other day. Oh, it shit. Really it's only the second time it's happened. And they were like, oh, I just listened to your the... The I think it was episode eight spoiler discussion. I was like, oh, fuck. I'm always so awkward in those situations. I haven't gotten recognized yet. <laughs> Happened to you, didn't it? At the Giant game, yeah. That's how it only happened to me twice. One in Toronto, very recently. I didn't ask to recognize that. I didn't get recognized yet. I think he... You think he made it up? I don't know. He was wearing the shirt, so I think someone pointed out the shirt, and he's like, I'm well, guess who I am. <laughs> the sh- go to the movies in that shirt, you'll I'm be both. recognized. <laughs> <laughs> he's um, like, no, I do both characters. They're characters I created, Bo and Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> just like the Seth MacFarlane and Nerd Soup just doing every voice for everybody <laughs> and like I mentioned guys we will be back with another spoiler discussion where we're going to be talking about the full season so be on the lookout for that make sure you like share subscribe put on your notifications do all that good stuff and we will be back so see you then I'm sweating right now dude <laughs> it's getting hot in her. wow that was probably our best review yet hey guys Aaron the Nerd Soup Monkey here with a brief shameless plug before we end the video 
Do you ever feel like you don't have an adequate amount of nerd soup in your life? Like you're going to bed hungry and yearning for the nonsensical yet entertaining nutrients our podcasts provide? Well, we've come up with the perfect solution. The Nerd Soup Fan Question Podcast, exclusively available to our Patreon supporters. You can sign up now by visiting patreon.com slash nerdsoup, and for the price of only $1 per month, you'll receive exclusive access to our weekly podcast, where we answer your questions that don't make it to the main show. And while you're there, you can check out the other rewards we offer to our patrons, like stick stickers, mugs, t-shirts, behind-the-scenes footage, and appearing in the credits at the end of our videos. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Roll the names of the nerds who make nerd soup possible. The reason why the crypto crash didn't send our lives spiraling down a black hole of no return. Alright, I'll stop talking so you can listen to this jazzy-ass music while checking if Bo spelt your name wrong in the credits.